it could be the scene of a natural disaster. But this is man-made. Not much is left in Yarmouk. But this tide of people. Let's go out of house! Let's go out of house! Armed men struggled to contain the crowds, but they couldn't hold back the emotion. Just look at the faces. They tell the story of Yarmouk, of people, thousands of people living under siege for months upon months without access to enough food or medical assistance. Absolutely desperate. Desperate for help. Desperate to get out. I'm so tired, so tired, this woman cries. Another woman stops us, pleading. Please, please, take us out. We're dying here. And the shelling hasn't stopped. A fragile truce has allowed the UN to finally gain access. But it still has to tread carefully negotiating between rebel fighters, government troops, and Palestinian factions. Every day is a battle just to get any aid in. And we will not forget you. The whole world will not forget you. We are here. The head of the UN's Palestinian Refugee Agency made his first trip today since the siege took hold last July. But for everybody, we will not forget you. We promise you. I've been speaking to the people here. They've been deprived of everything for too long and it is not a day too late that we're able to do this. But only a tiny amount of food, 60 parcels, were distributed today. More than 20,000 people are struggling to survive here. Most of them couldn't even reach this distribution point. Yarmouk was once a refuge for Palestinians fleeing the 1948 Arab-Israeli war. Now it's a prison. People are frantic to escape. Very few do. This man somehow managed to get inside Yarmouk to rescue his daughter. They haven't seen each other for a year. <laughs> We've been living with hunger and humiliation, she tells me. But where should we go now? This is our home. 13-year-old Kifa tries to put on a brave face. Everything was normal here, he begins. And then admits, there was no bread. It was all too much. It's like that for everyone here. Lise Doucette, BBC News, Yarmouk.